For millions of years, I have been the theatre of one of nature's greatest wonders. Travelling from the verdant green escarpments in the freezing cold and through the fields of food to the scorched plains in the arid lands, lending a hand to two countries, millions of people and an assortment of wildlife. gentle yet harsh. I flow in stillness and in disarray. I give life but I also take it. People love me, my beauty, my power. But I don't think I can give anymore. I am tired, tapped. The battle to strap my soul has been won and lost. I am the Mara River, and I am dying. Well, the Mara River is the stage for the great annual wildebeest migration that's the eighth wonder of the world. But this year, something was missing from the show, and that's the water. Now, this is the Talek River, one of the main life-giving veins of the Mara River. And from the sun-bleached boulders sticking out of the bed of this permanent river, these are just symptoms of a problem that we're going to show you on the Mara's deathbed. Every year between July and September, when the grass has shriveled and the springs are parched, thousands of restless wildebeests scan the air for distant scents of rain. From the broad grasslands of the Serengeti in Tanzania, the thousands of them rumble into the Maasai Mara National Reserve, a crucial fortress of grass and water for that season. And on a dusty strip of road, hundreds of curious visitors take the rock-ribbed path leading to the Maasai Mara Game Reserve, drawn to the hungry and thirsty nature's travelers. For the migrating animals, danger lies ahead. The Mara River is a formidable barrier on their annual journey. They have to scramble down one bank and up another, battling the fast moving waters and the predators that hide in them. And those that lurk about in the tall grass, lying in wait for their unsuspecting prey. This lioness, going on instinct, picks up more than she can eat. Dinner seemed certain for this pride until the young one wriggled out of the jaws of death and scurried to safety. For the privileged visitors, this life and death drama on an epic scale unfolds before their eyes. But this year, something was missing from the parade. The great water course is now drying up. Jackson Japit, a manager at Oldapoi, one of the camps in the larger Mara ecosystem, who was born and raised here, says the levels in the Mara River have over the years been on a steady decline. Then the Mara was 
beautiful. The river was flowing like nobody's business. The river was so big. We used to, to see a lot of migration in the months of uh, July till September. The water have gone down. Even in this season, many tourists never enjoyed a lot because the river is so, I don't know the way I can call it, small or maybe the water is gone off. We wanted to, to see the migration around the Mara River, but we can see a uh, crossing the river, maybe the next time. Joseph Teya works at the Sekenani camp as a ranger. He's been in the Mara for most of his life, and for him, the great wildebeest migration is losing its allure. What was once a great leap into the unknown is now a short, grateful hop across a mere winding belt of mud. The Mara River is a 395-kilometer long waterway connecting the Masai Mara with the Serengeti in Tanzania. It's one of the drainage basins that feed into the Lake Victoria. Conservationists now worry what's happening amounts to an ecological disaster. Tourists always come here for migration, mostly. And what is worrying most is that Mara River is going to its end. In the next five to ten years, we have no Mara River, neither tourists coming to this country. Masai Mara, what always brings the tourists is the migration. Because I suppose in Botswana there is lion, in Namibia there is lion, there is uh, elephants. But the main thing that has made Mara to be much more famous is the migration that always took place from Jul July to almost November. Very soon, if nothing will be done on an immediate effect, we shall cry as a country. It shall become big shame for the children, generations to come, to be told we used to have Masai Mara and no more. The answers to the riddle of the Mara's dwindling waters lie upstream. Up a treacherous terrain and onto the lofty peaks of the Mao forest escarpments. So we've travelled some 200 or so kilometres to find some answers to the receding water levels in the Mara River. And we've ended up here at the Enapuyapui Swamp. This is at the heart of the Kiptunga Forest in the Mao Eastern Complex. This is the source of the Mara River and we told a couple of years back this whole area was covered by water. But as you can see, the transformation is quite startling. This amassment of reeds act as a water reservoir, trapping and storing rainwater and then pumping it out during the dry seasons. But it's a reservoir that is now drying up, as I've witnessed. Which means in a supply of maji up Kiptunga forest. Kiptunga. Wakati ya kiangasi inapo kuja, unaona maji inasonga mbaka. Labda inabaji, inabagi tu kwa maji kidoga hapa kani mahali unaona. Lakini hapo samani, hata kiangasi yenye ilikuwa inakuja inagani. Ilikuwa tu inakuta ina, ikuwa na maji. Minki hatu, sana sana. The swamp was once surrounded by a fence of indigenous trees. Usiwane, usiwane nabu ya wikama ni hapa tu. Hapa wate ilikuwa musitu. Mpaka huko chini kulikuwa na mienzi. Na ilikuwa inalete, inafuruta mfua hata kutoka na kuru. 
The rising population of forest dwelling communities is also one of the biggest threats to the forest and the wetlands within it. Kitambo mzito ilikuwa mingi. Na haiku watu wakua wameishi ndani sana. Kulikuwa na watu tuwa wa okay, community ndio walikuwa wanaishi kwa msituni. Na wakati hiyo hawakuwa na hawakuwa na biashara mingi kwa msituni. Walikuwa tu ni kufuga nyuki na kuyaka hiyo msinga. Na hata ulangusi wa msituni hawakuwa wakati hiyo mingi. Venya saisi kwa saisi biashara imekuwa inaendelea kwa msitu. Venya watu wanaendelea kuishi msitu. Fenya maji inaendelea kwenda chini. People can see just through their naked eyes that Mara River is dying. Cutting trees everywhere, leaving the forest to be like a bear. You can't even believe how my forest look like. Nicholas Morero, the chairman of the Narrow County Natural Resources Network, says in the last 20 years, more than a quarter of the forest has been decimated by human development, agricultural activity and a booming trade in timber. The water that runs from it is now increasingly less in flow and much lower in quality. The next three years, no no mamara, hakuna mara tena. Kiangalia saa hii, semu hizi, misitu imekatakato sana. Kwa hiyo msitu, kuna miti ambayo inaifadhi maji, na kuna ingine na kunyo maji. Ile mebaki ni ile ya kumalisa maji. Na tena sana sana kama ingewezekana, wanga epewa kukate karibu na sosu. Wanga ina mbali kabisa, mbali na sosu. Minataika na tupane indigina street kule. Kwa sabi hiyo msitu wa mao, siya kupana miti kutoka mbali. Tujaribu kutafuta ile indigina streets ambayo imekua kwa hiyo msitu. The Mao Forest is the country's largest remaining indigenous forest and also the largest of the country's five water towers. It's also the largest closed canopy forest ecosystem. The rivers that flow from the Mao quench the thirst of communities beyond the country's borders. But a forest that was once limitless ends abruptly in massive tea plantations. What was once a dense and disoriented jungle, now a well-manicured garden, as farms take up much of what was once forest land. A task force under the government's Ministry of Environment highlights the plunder that has been going on for nearly 25 years now. By 2009, more than a quarter of the 400,000 hectare forest had been destroyed, and the devastation continues as settlers from other regions moved in and were given rights to the land. To turn the situation around, the government in 2009 drove out some 8,000 settlers from the forest. Now, another phase targeting some 40,000 settlers in the Maasai Mao forest block looms, setting off a brush fire that has consumed two communities with differing views about the forest and its resources. The Maasai Mao is okay as a conservation issue, an environmental issue, but with serious security implications. We have a problem on our hands now. How do you confront this problem and address it? These lands where the ancient forest trees once stood is the battleground between two communities who've been at odds with each other over the future of the Mao forest. James Olentaya is one of the many families in Olemekenyo village on the hills bordering the forest who've been consumed by the flames of this conflict. A group of attackers descended on his home one night and laid waste to his dreams. Tunastukia watu watu wanalia, wanalia, kila pahali, nduru, kila, everywhere. Ndipo wakaja kufamia sisi. Walitu singira. Baati tulitorokesha ngombe. Na watoto. Sisi wanaume tukabaki. Na wana wano, manyupa ima, eh, eh, Kawaida imechomwa, hii nyumba ilikuwa rumi sita, rumi ini, vile unano. Haya gari yanku, ndio hile. Hii nyumba ilikuwa saidi ya elifu miambili. Gari yanku, elifu miatatu, ambayo nilinua, ilinua, imeenda. Nisi ni asara. Si waliweka mimi sro. Siliasi sasa sasa nimeenda siro. Eh? 
nimeendelea lakini walirudisha mimi mpaka siro kwa hiyo lengo la hii vita inaonekana ni mau forest ni mau forest chacho ya hii vita hakuna kitu kingine ni wale wasua, wa usaidas ndio wanajaribu kutoa mambo ili wapata nafasi asitolewe kwa kwa mau forest wa asiche fita alafu serikali okose nafasi hawa kutoa kutoka kwa uh, kutolewa kwa forest but there's always another side to this story jane rono is yet another victim caught in the middle of it her house and property in all posemoro village were reduced to ashes one night in september she fled the violence and found refuge in a nearby school at least for the night so si tulipoenda asubuhi tukakuja mpaka shule ya Olengave tukakaa hapo kitu karibu saa tatu tukaambiwa manyumba imechomwa hii yetu sasa so tukasikia kuna manyumba imechomwa tu kujua ni gani tukaambiwa ni yote mpaka store wakachoma eh mahindi ya store eh, mahindi yenye ilikuwa store karibu kama ikaongolewa karibu gunia zaidi ya 400 Jane says the fighting was triggered by a cattle rustling incident before it degenerated into full-blown ethnic violence when neighbor turned against neighbor one person was killed 29 others escaped with arrow wounds Tu hizi jua sana kwa sababu hii wanasema ni wizi tu ya hiyo ya ngombe wanakaa wakiiba ngombe alafu vita inaanza wanasema wakali nyinyi wanaiba ngombe inaanza vita wamasai wanaiba inaleta vita This was only one chapter in an episode of violence that's left behind deep scars between the Maasai, originally pastoralists whose cattle depend on the rivers never running dry, and the Kalenjin, mostly farmers, who came here seeking green fields to plow. But the real battle is between government policy on the environment and communities that have made homes in the thinning forest cover. The government targets to forcibly evict some 40,000 settlers from the forest. Those people have got no idea the kind of of, of damage they are causing down the down the downstream because there were it rains almost all the year they plant the harvest they plant again they have got no idea whatever they are doing has got repercussions on other people downstream including other countries. People are saying this that clashes now in Arok. You wait until they start now fighting properly over resources. Do what they will. These people are, are, are herders and they know that the animals depend on, on water. Yeah, so this we are, we are just being wise. Yeah, and not being wise, if being wise is a bad thing, then I'm, I'm prepared to be called a bad person. Many of those who've settled here claim to have rights to the land within the forest. But a report by the Ministry of Environment details how after five community group ranches near the forest subdivided their land among group members, government officials, politicians, private surveyors and other influential persons irregularly increased the sizes of these group ranches into the forest boundaries. This extra land was sold off to unsuspecting outsiders. Waliusa. Yacho sana ni wandorobo. Niondorobo. Na usifikie tu ma ufarasi ni wandorobo ni wakale tu. Wako Maasai. Yes. Can we honestly say that title deeds in that past, in that in that part of this county yeah, are doing what they are supposed to do? And if they are not doing that, why are they not doing that? So they are not legal documents. Yeah, you cannot go to the bank and borrow money using those title deeds. As the battle for the soul of the Mara rages, this lifeblood of the Mara Serengeti ecosystem is in its sunset days. and the odds are stacked against the species of this massive ecosystem mau forest na zukiri sio kenya tu inakafa tanzania baka egypt kuna inji zingine ambayo inategemea mau forest mau forest ikimalisika wanyama aborini yetu kawaida kekorok hakuna kwa hivyo wale mamuto imeanza kukauka Mara River imeanza kukauka 
Isi singine ambayo kidogo dogo kidogo dogo imeisha. Je. Uhai ya binadamu ni mali. Kwa hiyo mau forest lazima ichungwe. Eh? Yeah. Lazima ichungwe. The wildlife here needs a vast dispersal area to survive seasons of drought. But these safe havens are fast disappearing. Uh, whenever now you go to the Amara, you can see many, many, many camps. These standard camps. And again, I think they have a problem. They drain sewages, and I think they can as well even affect the river. The lodges have erected kilometers of electric fencing cutting off traditional migratory routes and dispersal areas for wildlife. The wildebeest population has also declined, and even though they're not yet a threatened species, they are a keystone species, and a lot lies on their existence. But from the luxury camps and lodges, the appeal of the Great Crossing continues to draw in visitors. Revenue from the Maasai Mara accounted for 90% of local revenue sources for the Narok County government, running into billions of shillings every year. But the fleet of tourist vehicles haven't quite been getting the spectacle that they came for. There is, actually, I think there is a lot of interference. So the crocodiles will also soon extinct uh, on the banks of the Mara River because before some years back there used to be so many, we used to know uh, identified spots where you can go and maybe have a few of more than maybe 50 crocodiles, you know, sun basking in the same point, but not anymore. We do have lots of repeat clans, and of course they see the changes. Masai Mara is being sold by word of mouth. If people come here and see, like in after two years, they come and see Mara River is dry up. That's the same, same word got back to worldwide. And they'll again say, don't go to Kenya, because I, didn't, I don't think there's anything else that you can see now. So let's go to Namibia, or let's go to Botswana, or Tanzania. Serengeti is our neighboring country here. Mara in the interim, the crossing into the Mara from the Serengeti continues, even though there isn't much of a river to cross. But in the long term, the warning signs are out. Profound choices have to be made, as the great wildebeest migration isn't great anymore, and soon it will just be no more.